Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend, Mr. Dan Bird. How you doing, sir? Doing great. And yourself? I'm doing well, man. Thank you very much for all you do. You're bringing some new content. You're helping me learn a new language. This is called technical trading, allowing me to remove the emotion, which is my weakness when I was trading back in the day and why I haven't touched stocks in 20-ish years. So it's been great fun. We will get to what we're doing this week in the next episode. But why don't we talk about last week? We talked about the January effect, what you see going on, because it's a very, last week was very interesting. Yes, next, this coming week will be even more interesting, I think. Yeah, uh, Thursday, right? CPI? Yeah. Thursday is a CPI, probably be the worst in 40 years. Yeah, you got to, are we going to, what do you, so I think they're expecting 7-2. Yeah. And uh, my over get, under 7-4. I think it might be 7-3. Okay, so split the difference, all right. Very cool. All right. Unless they unless they play with the numbers, I'm a little suspect on the jobs numbers last week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just a little bit, right? They're going to be bad. They're going to be bad. They're going to they're going to be bad. Oh wait, no, they're really good. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, really, really good. good. Yeah, way and, way better than the ADP numbers, which is yeah, interesting. Well. ADP was down 301. They were up 426, and huge revisions to December and November. Right. Crazy. Yeah. So. Right. And unfortunately, it's one of those situations where good news is bad news. Exactly. It's, in my opinion, cemented 50 basis point move in March. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think, and I think the uh, inflation numbers are going to cement it even more. Yeah. The only chance they have is for whatever reason, it comes in under seven. So it rolled over early. It, it really can't. Base effect, rent, all these other things are still oil. Yeah, we, oh. talk, we talked about that last week on the base effect. And I showed you my... Uh, you did. My spreadsheet, and I'm going to continue to update that. So when we get the number of Thursday, I had estimates in. Yeah. For the rest of the year, but I'll put the actuals in. And we'll yeah. actually, we'll, we'll, we'll then we'll compare and see how it actually mapped out. I look forward to that next week. Very cool. All right. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And Can you see this? I can. Yep. So again, folks, if you're listening to this on my podcast and you'd like to get all this information he sends out every every weekend, breakpointtrading at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to get a copy of this or the um, risk calculator, which we usually look at as well. So all great stuff just to get a little more comfortable with this. So what do you got in this week's newsletter? Uh, this Well, this is an excerpt from it. A um, couple of cartoons. I talk yeah. about the bear, the bear market bounce, yep. right? Mm -hmm. The the dead cat bounce. Basically, you can see the bull over there trying to revive the cat. Yeah. Um, that's what I think is happening right now. Uh, I'll show you the S and P chart. We'll talk about what what's uh, happening right now in the market. Mm -hmm. But I also talk about the January effect. So here is an example. There's a lot more in the newsletter itself about this. But the January effect essentially is something that was created by um, Traders Almanac, mm -hmm. Stock Traders Almanac, which has been around for years and years and years. And basically all they do is they look at historical information. Mm -hmm. So historically and statistically, what happens? And the January effect is, there's three components to it. Number one is the Santa Claus rally. Mm -hmm. Santa Claus rally typically begins on December 20th. And it runs until the second trading day of the new year. Okay. Which I think was the third this year, third or fourth. That's, so that's component number one. We had a positive Santa Claus rally okay. in December. Component number two is the first five trading days of January. So this year we had a negative first five trading days. Okay. And component number three is the full month of January. How did the full month end up? Mm -hmm. And we had a negative full month in January. So two out of the three were negative. Okay. Typically when that happens, the year itself ends up being negative. Mm. There's, I actually watched a webinar yesterday that was fascinating. He actually went back 50 years mm -hmm. and shows statistically that this is, this is pretty accurate. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, just like anything in the market. You can't predict what's going to happen because mm -hmm. anything could happen. Correct. Um, the, the two years, which was really interesting, the two years that actually had a negative January effect, but ended up with an over 20% market by the end of the year, mm -hmm. both of them 
we're coming off of bear markets. Coming off of bear markets. Coming off of bear markets. So 2009 right. was one, mm -hmm. and 2003 was one. Yeah, so I would say we're not coming off a bear market. We are not coming off a bear market right now. <laughs> Right. Well, that would be a fair assessment. Yes. Okay. Right. So you can see some of the some of the numbers and that that little chart there is in my newsletter this week as well. Mm -hmm. um, you can see 2022 down at the bottom. Yep. Minus 5.3 for the January barometer. Mm -hmm. JB stands for January barometer. Okay. Um, it's it's one of the worst. It's actually the second worst, other than 1960. Mm, wow, 1960. If uh, in, in the webinar I watched it, in, in fact, next week I might put a link to that because it was actually a free webinar if, if other people want to see it as well. Yeah, I would think they would. But yeah. one of the statistics that I thought was interesting that I didn't know was the NASDAQ January numbers were the second worst ever. Mm. The worst ever was 2008. Oh, wow, 2008. So this year was second only to 2008. Yeah, when I'm looking at this chart, I'm actually looking at 1974. Right. I, I think we're repeating a lot of the sins of the 70s, and right now we're in the early, early stages. So that's, that's yeah, that could that, be. That's a haircut right there. Oof. Right. 30 percent. Yeah, you can see you can see the full year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it. 11 percent. Yeah. Okay. Now. Um, <laughs> You know, the inflation numbers, and we've talked about this before, but the inflation numbers on Thursday is going to have a big effect on what happens the first half of the year. Correct. At least the first three months, I think three to six months, mm -hmm. we're going to essentially be have a down mar market. Mm -hmm. okay. That's why I talked about the uh, dead cat bounce. Mm -hmm. I'll actually go over here and show you. Uh, let's see. This is the NASDAQ. Actually, the uh, NDX, yeah. NASDAQ 100, yeah. the top 100 stocks in the NASDAQ. So this chart right here is uh, basically the average true range. Each of these shaded areas represents one average true range. Okay. Average true range is the range that a stock trades in in one day mm -hmm. from top to bottom, from okay. open to close, or, or from high to low. Yep. Okay. And then as you go, so the, the dark one in the middle is one average true range, the next layer is two, and then the light one in the end is three. Gotcha. So three times what the normal average would be. Hmm. It doesn't stay three times very long. You can see right here, it went down here and then bounced back. And normally what happens is, is it bounces back to the middle. Hmm. It did. What I call a reversion to the mean. Yep. All right, so that's what it did. This last the rally that we've had the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and everybody's feeling that, oh, we hit the bottom and it's all over. <laughs> well, we went right back to the mean. That's all we did. Yeah. Right back to the middle and started back down again. So next week will be really important to see if we can break out and keep, keep going higher. Okay. But I think this is the dead cat bounce. That's what yeah, this is. I think so too. Okay. And not only do I think we'll go lower, I think we will actually go much lower. Mm. <clears throat> this is the S and P, and if I expand this out to two years, so there's what two years looks like. Yep. So this is this is the bounce right here at about forty three hundred. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. You can pretty you can pretty much see it right here. Yeah, forty two eighty seven. It says. Yep. Right, but I think we I think we go down to this level down here. What's where support uh, is so thirty seven hundred? That's March of twenty twenty one. Well, just look at the look at the horizontal line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. It. I'm just trying to see where it touches that. What is magic about that support line? Um, well, mo a lot of the a lot of the oh, times the tops. it, it came up and hit and went down and then it hit and finally went through and then it came back down and hit it and came back down and hit it and then took off. Now I see it. I, I wasn't looking right. back far enough. I get what I see what you're looking at now. Okay. Yeah, I see it. OK. And then on All top right. of that, the, um, the the two times recently in 2018 and then 2020, uh -huh. those 2018 was about a 15 percent between the 
um, between the 50 day moving average and the low. So you can see the 50 days right here, this red dotted line. Got it. 2018 was 15%. It went down before it recovered. Okay. 2020 was 27%. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Before it recovered. If we go 15% from this 50 day moving average, it takes us to 3,700. 3, Makes perfect sense. Okay. So now will that happen? I don't know. Yeah, I have no, knows. no idea. Yeah. It, it may not happen. We might break through this and get back to new highs. Yeah. Now I do think, I do think that by the end of the year, we'll be back at the highs again. So you're in the camp of the Fed. So what I think you just said without saying it is you think the Fed's going to get tight half a basis point, maybe another quarter, uh, then the market is going to be squawking and crying and you think they reverse trend. I think that's what you just said without saying it. That's a, that's what I'm saying. And not only that, not only because the market will be crashing and you know everybody will be crying, but also that 12 month uh, rolling view of inflation starts to look that, that I showed last week. Yeah, we'll start to roll over, and the, the Fed will then have cover. Yeah. To, oh, to, we thought it's better. Uh, yeah. yeah, we said four or five, but let's just pause at three and see what happens. Yeah, maybe we'll stop at one full percentage point or something like that. Right. We'll stop here. Yeah, I got yeah. you. Yeah. And by I the way, one. And by the way, one percentage point. Right now, we're at a quarter of a percent, basically. Mm -hmm. Basically, one percent is still historically very low. Oh yeah, <laughs> believe me. Yeah, I, I started doing my real estate thing in, with real with mortgages in the seven. So yeah, right. Totally good. Okay. So, so just uh, a couple of, couple of other things about the market. Yeah, um, please. Here here's the ten year treasury. Yeah, one point one point nine one two. Yep, almost one point nine five, which is where it was when we started co the COVID crash. I actually think it breaks two percent this week. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And then the the more important thing is the acceleration of the two year. Yes, we're going flat. Yep. See how the two year is accelerating up to the 10 year? Yeah. It's, it's closing, actually it's actually increasing faster than the 10 year. It's closing the gap. Yeah. And, and this is what hap this is what happens over here on the left mm -hmm. when the two year gets higher than the 10 year. That is called a yield inversion, folks, and generally points to a recession. Generally right. Speaking. You can see right here the recession was right after that. Yep, it can. Now we we're probably nine months, six to nine months away from that happening. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually pretty interesting because I because again this is a bigger picture, right? I think what's yeah. going to happen actually is the ten years, the ten years going to go up not because of rate increases, it's going to be because they are executing the largest quantitative tightening. Ever. Yes. Yes. That's going to be a problem. And I think that goose is the 10, not the two. Yeah, I, I think I totally agree with you. I think the market is going to send rates higher, correct. not the Fed. Correct. A thousand percent correct. Yes. Right. So that's something to watch. Now, the, this yield inversion, it usually precedes a recession by about six to nine months, yes. sometimes 12 months. Mm -hmm. So if this yield inversion happens in six months or so, then recession is about a year and a half out. Yeah, 2023. Right. Gotcha. Here's the VIX, the VIX from last week. Now mm -hmm. I've I've created this, these moving averages here to help me understand when the VIX is telling us that the market is going down. Mm -hmm. And that's where it turns red right here. Gotcha. The, the gray one behind is the actual VIX number. I got up to 33. When it gets above 30, it it usually doesn't stay there very long unless there's some really bad things going on. Got it. And then it will, it will start to come back down again. So it has come back down. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see, you can kind of see the gray part behind here. Even though the red looks like it's coming down, the gray is actually start, starting back up again. Oh, I see. It. So if the market starts to go down again because of the inflation numbers, yeah. then this VIX is going to spike again. Yep. Um, and then Bitcoin, something mm -hmm. we can talk about. Sure, go ahead. Probably your, some of your listeners might be interested in Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. Crypto's got a lot of people's attention. Yeah, Bitcoin seems to be seems to have washed out a bunch of people and now going up again. Going back up. So, my um, the the way that I look at charts and and depending on what I'm investing in, I like to see the eight moving moving average cross the twenty one. That's the pink one and the blue one. Okay. So for Bitcoin, it crossed way back here. Mm -hmm. Back here in November last year, hmm. 
That was the sell signal. Actually, when it closes below the 50, which is the dotted red line, mm. that's the sell signal. So the sell signal on Bitcoin would have been November 18th, okay. closed at about 57,000. Got it. All right. So that's that was the signal to get out. Mm -hmm. It did not go back above it since then. It almost did right here. It looked like it was trying to, okay. but it didn't. And it certainly didn't get above the 50 day. Mm. All right. And it went all the way back down to 33. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could have avoided all that pain from 57 to 33 and just again, by following, just by following the, the eight and the 21. So that's eight day and 21 day. Eight day um, exponential moving average. Exponential okay. means it puts more weight on the last couple of days rather than smoothing it for the whole period. Got it. Right. Okay. Now, look where it is right now. It's getting close. It's just crossing. Yeah. And it's right? getting really close to the 50. And, and the close, the 50 day is up here. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't closed above it yet, but it looks like it's heading that way. Very cool. Just something to be interested in and something we'll talk about when we talk about your trades. Mm -hmm. um, one way to play this, if you don't want to actually buy Bitcoin, mm -hmm. is buy the ETF for Bitcoin. Mm, great which is GB, GBTC. Yeah. So you can you can kind of use the same methodology. Okay. And use that as a proxy for Bitcoin. Instead of spending you know fifty thousand dollars, you can spend twenty seven dollars. Got it. Much more manageable. Very cool. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Any other so, thoughts on last week before we shut this down and we talk about next week? Uh, no, I, I put a couple of a um, couple of charts in there. I analyzed PayPal mm -hmm. and I analyzed Amazon okay. in my new in my newsletter. Cool. Which were both really interesting. Yeah. I mean pay, PayPal, PayPal, you could have you could have seen that one coming back in October of last year. Hmm. Okay. In fact, I was watching uh, CNBC and the talking heads, including Kramer, were on there basically dumbfounded by what happened with PayPal. Yeah. They, they couldn't understand it. They said, you know why it's a good company. We just can't understand why it's going down like this. Mm. And the, the uh, Melissa asked them, well, when are you going to sell? Mm. And they all look like deer in a headlight, ah. kind, of, kind of embarrassed. Oh, no. Like, when are, when are you going to sell? And they all said, well, I'm going to wait a couple of days and see what happens. Well, yeah. the, the charts were showing them back in October that they should have been out. Oh, got it. Um, you know, I don't know why they're not using a technical analyst to help them. Here's PayPal right here. Yeah. Right, here's the, the, the eight and the 21 cross way back here. Okay. Right, you can see down here, this is, this is uh, PayPal versus the rest of the market and PayPal versus its own industry. It starts to underperform Yeah. way back in, July of last year, mm -hmm. it tried to tried to make a run here, but failed. Mm -hmm. Got rejected again. Got rejected again right here. Here's the final sell point right here in October. Mm -hmm. If they had just been reading this and saw that it dropped below the 50 and it dropped below the 200 day moving average, oh yeah, and the accumulation distribution, which tells you whether big institutions are getting rid of it, distributing, mm -hmm. or whether they're buying it, accumulating. You can see there where it dropped below this pink line. Yeah. Let me turn this off. We're dropping below this pink line right here. <laughs> Big institutions not only were stopped accumulating, they started distributing. Mm -hmm. Now, on a, a company like PayPal, it takes them months sure. to get out of their position. Yeah, absolutely. Very they cool. can't do that in one day. Right. So you can see what this line looked like over the next few months. Mm -hmm continued going down. So all the big institutions were distributing, selling. Mm -hmm. And you can see the price went down right here. Now the price came back and tried to rally, but again, didn't get above the 50. Mm -hmm. And then right here crashed last week. Yeah. If those talking heads on CNBC had been watching this back in October, that's a 50% loss Ouch. between here and here. Ouch. But the charts were telling them long yeah. ago, to get out this this chart is actually in my newsletter this week that's awesome again folks the newsletter is free it, all you have to do is send an email what is the email address one more time 
breakpoint trading at gmail.com. Very cool, folks. This is something I get every week and I have a chance to scan it. I'm scanning it every week now because, again, as you'll see in episode number three, we're going to talk about what I'm doing with this information. So, Dan, thank you very much. You bet. Mm -hmm.